political violence. People who, you know, go to war for this country, or who blow themselves up to get rid of this country from their country, share the idea that violence, whatever else we may think about it, is a meaningful way to conduct that discussion. Accepting just received opinions about what violence is and what our reactions should be, I think is very much part of the reason why we seem to be engaged in more and more situations of absolutely intractable violence to which no one can even imagine a solution. The more continuous your military engagement with an enemy, the more like that enemy or the more like you that enemy becomes. In other words, warfare, terrorism, violence is a social relationship. You often hear it said, well, you know, once you start being violent, then I'm not, you know, I'm not even going to listen to your argument. You know, for us, what politically rules out whatever it is, the Iraqi insurgents or the Palestinian suicide bombers are trying to tell us, you know, we don't even want to hear, you know why? Because they, they're not playing the game in the right way. First, you've got to be democratic, then we'll listen. Right? But that, of course, means that we have no, you know, we have no way out except to be violent back, because we've already ruled out that a response to violence might be dialogue. So our conceptions of what it is to be brave uh, are all present there on the battlefield and are part of why uh, people behave in the way that they do when they actually exercise violence. Uh, all of us live somewhere and all of us have feelings about the places that we live. If you ever wondered what happened to all the mummies that were in those tombs in Egypt, they were exported, uh, shiploads of them were exported to the capitals of Europe where mummy eating, corpse eating, became a favoured cure for all kinds of uh, uh, disease and even thought to be rather rejuvenating. Um, so we have been both literal and figurative, religious and practising cannibals, no less than those for whom that word, or from whom that word originally derived. Um, people are more or less reluctant to fight. Uh, that is, uh, unless one has a particular personal engagement with an enemy, you don't even know who it is you might be fighting. So you have to be really taught as to uh, why you need to go kill uh, this person. And in that context, uh, the presentation of certain key cultural ideas, uh, for example, of course, we're very aware in the modern age of the way in which appeals to pat patriotism uh, are made in order to uh, present a convincing argument for uh, fighting or for war. And so in the past, too, appeals to clan loyalty, kinship loyalties, uh, ritual proclivities, um, the differences in language or custom that others had can all be very fruitful grounds for producing an idea of a, a difference which then can only really be negotiated by violence. So I think that uh, the production of warfare is startlingly consistent through time. It requires always this political consensus, this appeal to wider cultural values, and through that, um, hopefully from the point of view of uh, leaders, uh, the motivations to get people to do things which I strongly suspect otherwise they'd be very reluctant to do.